welcome back to story time. This is story time, Christmas edition. Pastor Lori here from the Ferret and Newport United Methodist Churches. And I've got a good Christmas story for us. It's called The Cripple Lamb by Max Cicado and his family, Jana, Andrea, and Sarah Licato. It's called The Crippled Lamb. Once upon a time, in a sunny valley, there lived a little lamb named Joshua. He was white with black spots, black feet, and sad eyes. Josh felt sad when he saw the other lambs with snow white wool and no spots. He felt sad when he saw other sheep with their moms and dads because he didn't have a mom or dad. Because he felt saddest when he saw other lambs running and jumping because he couldn't. Josh had been born with one leg that didn't work right. He was crippled. He always limped when he walked. And there's the picture of them all. That's why he always watched while the other lambs ran and played. Josh fell alone and sad, except when Abigail was around. Abigail was Josh's best friend. She didn't look like a friend for a lamb, she was an old cow. <laughs> she was brown and white with white blotches that looked a little like rain puddles on her path, on a path. Her belly was round as a barrel and her voice was always kind and friendly. Some of Josh's favorite hours were spent with Abigail. So here's his friend. They loved to pretend they were adventurers in distant lands. Josh liked to listen to Abigail tell stories about the stars. They would spend hours on a hill looking into the valley. They were good friends, but even with a friend like Abigail, Josh still got sad. It made him sad to be the only lamb who could not run and jump and play in the grass. That's when Abigail would turn to him and say, don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for you and for those who feel left out. Okay, there they are. It's hard to see the picture. It's a big one. But this is them together. <clears throat> Josh wanted to believe her, but it was hard. Some days he just felt all alone. He really felt alone the day the shepherds decided to take the lambs to the next valley where there was more grass. The sheep had been in this valley so long that the ground was nearly bare. All the sheep were excited when the shepherd told them they were going to a new meadow. As they prepared to leave, Josh hobbled over and took his place on the edge of the group. But the others started laughing at him. You're too slow to go all the way to the valley. Go back, Slowpoke. We'll never get there if we have to wait on you. Go back, Joshua. Oh, even lambs are mean as kids. Oh, it's horrible. And you hear the tippy tap of my doggy. He's decided it's time for a drink, I guess. That's when Josh looked up and saw the shepherd standing in front of them. They are right, my little Joshua. You better go back. The trip is too long for you. Go and spend the night in the stable. Joshua looked at the man for a long time. Then he turned slowly and began limping away. Wah, 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 wah. I told him to go back. But he said he's going back to the stable. Hmm. Okay. When Josh got to the top of the hill, he looked down and he saw that the other sheep headed toward the green grass. Never before had he felt so left out. A big tear slipped out of his eye, rolled down his nose, fell on a rock. Just then he heard Abigail behind him and Abigail said what she always said when Josh felt sad. Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. And slowly the two friends turned and walked to the stable together. At least he's not alone. Here's all the, they're leaving. There they are. 
By the time they got to the little barn, the sun was setting like a big orange ball. Josh and Abigail went inside and began to eat some hay out of the feed box. They were very hungry and the hay tasted good. For a little while, Joseph forgot that he had been left behind. Go to sleep, little friend, Abigail said. If they finished eating, you've had a hard day. Josh was tired, so he laid down in the corner in some straw and closed his eyes. He felt Abigail lie down beside him and was glad to have her as a friend. Aww. Everybody should have a good friend. It helps make things go easier. Soon Josh was asleep. At first he slept soundly, curled up against Abigail's back. In his sleep he dreamed. He dreamed of running and jumping just like the other sheep. He dreamed of long walks with Abigail through the valley. And he dreamed of being in a place where he never felt left out. Suddenly, so, some strange noises woke him up. Okay, here they are sleeping. Well, he woke up there, right? Dun, 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 dun. Abigail, he whispered, wake up, I'm scared. Abigail lifted her big head and looked around. The stable was dark except for a small lamp hanging on a wall. Somebody's in here, jo Josh whispered. So he looked across the dimly lit stable. There, lying on some fresh hay in the feed box, was a baby. A young woman was resting, I bet she was, was resting on a big pile of hay beside the feed box. Joshua looked at Abigail, thinking his friend could tell him what was going on, but Abigail was, not, was just as surprised. Here's them looking on. So here's the manger with the baby. Mary. Josh looked again at the woman and the child, then limped across the stable. He stopped next to the mother and looked into the baby's face. The baby was crying. He was cold. The woman picked up the baby and put him in the hay next to her. Josh looked around the stable for something to keep the baby warm. Usually they were blankets, but not tonight. The shepherds had taken them for their trip. Mm. There they are. How cute. Then Josh remembered his own soft, warm wool. Timidly, he walked over and curled up close to the baby. Soon, the little child stopped crying and went back to sleep. About that time, a man entered the stable carrying some rags. I'm sorry, Mary, he explained. This is all the cover I could find. It's okay, she answered. This little lamb has kept the new king warm. A king, Joseph looked at the baby and wondered who he might be. His name is Jesus, Mary spoke, as if she knew Josh's question. God's son. He came from heaven to teach us about God. snuggly. I have a couple things to keep them warm. Just then, there was another noise at the door. It was the shepherds, the ones who had left Joshua behind. Their eyes were big and they were excited. We saw a bright light and heard an angels. They began. Then they saw Joshua next to the baby. Joshua, do you know who this baby is? He does now. It was the young mother who was speaking. She looked at Joshua and smiled. God has heard your prayers, little lamb. This little baby is the answer. Wow, okay. So we see a baby and baby Jesus and the parent and then all the shepherds. Joshua looked down at the baby. Somehow he knew this was a special child and this was a special moment. He had also understood why he had been born with a crippled leg. Had he been in, like the other sheep, he would have been in the valley. But since he was different, he was in the stable, among the first to welcome Jesus into the world. Aww. And he had a purpose. He kept Jesus warm in the story. Last page. He turned and walked back to Abigail and took his place beside her. You were right. He told her, God does have a special place for me. The end.
that's the crippled lamb. And just like that lamb, we also have a purpose in life. And uh, God will let you know what it is. It doesn't matter whether it's just as being a mom or a stay-at-home dad, uh, working on cars, being a nurse or a teacher or a preacher. I don't know what your calling is, but you will figure it out. God will help you. And God will help you to be the best you that you can be. So I want you to know, Merry Christmas. And I hope you have a great new year. And let's have a little prayer to start. End our year and start our new one. Lord, we thank you for Christmas and uh, how you give us a purpose in life. We're grateful for Jesus who helps us to show us our purpose. Help us in this new year to do well and to put you first. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for tuning in. Merry Christmas. Love you guys. Bye.